The Projectionist by Laura Fitzgerald Part 1 Yes, in those days, I used to spend a lot of time in my art. I suppose I've always been good at painting and drawing, and I needed space to get on with it. When I drew, it came from this deep place inside me. I sort of had to listen to myself. Back then, I dreamt of having a quiet life, not being interfered with, you know. We met at the rock festival. I'd gone there with my big sister, Abby. It was summer. I'd just done my A-levels. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, who I was. But then I was just messing about. I used to go down the beach quite a lot. Mark and I had always been close. You know, Mum used to say she was glad we got on, that we'd always be there for each other. Now, when I heard of the festival, I thought we'd have a great time. Only we got there and it started chucking it down. We were watching a band and Mark started shivering and saying he'd had enough. So we went back to our tent and a bit later I bumped into some of my friends and went back to their tent for the night. But I lay awake, worrying. I shouldn't have left him. I'd gone there on my own to chill out, get some ideas for my art. I was in my tent trying to get some kit when I heard this guy coughing right down the road. I couldn't just leave him. Psst. She just appeared at the door to my tent. Are you all right in there? Can I help? <clears throat> oh, I, I, I think I've got uh, meningitis. Why? What's wrong with you? I've got a bad throat. Uh, anything else? No. Ah. So, uh, would that be meningitis the killer or meningitis the cold? Look, I've only got starburst, but do you want one? She was calm, self-contained, if you know what I mean. Had a hood up, but I could tell she was pretty. I, um, I thought I'd give it a go. You've got a nice voice. I like your eyes. Thanks. Will you get in my sleeping bag with me? What? Here, have the whole packet. Might shut you up. Hey, hey where are you going? Come back. Yeah, right. Oh, no, what's a pri... I thought, Mark, why didn't you just get her number? Now, I tried to settle down, but I couldn't sleep after that. Something just sort of clicked in my mind. At first light, I got up to find her. I was queuing for a bacon roll to take back to Mark when I spotted him in the crowd. He looked awful. I felt really guilty for leaving him. We were by this big tent, so I pulled him in to keep dry. I thought, why can't she just leave me alone? I didn't know what to say. I didn't want to say about the girl at my tent. Only it was dark in there. It, it drew us in. At the top of the tent was a hole and some mirrors. In front of us was a white table with an image on it of people moving about, like a film. I was trying to work out what it was when I noticed the sign. It said it was a camera obscura. The mirrors and lenses above us projected what was going on outside the tent down onto the table. Now, in other words, we could see the people outside, but they couldn't see us. What's it for? It says it was invented to look at the sun. Oh, you mean to look at things we're not meant to look at? Honestly, Mark, no. It's to look at things we need to see. Technology was never your strong point, was it? it feels like spying. Don't be daft. So you'd like to be watched by people you can't see? Mark, watching people is natural. I mean, we're still animals, really, aren't we? Inside us, in our hearts, in our blood. It's in our nature to watch each other. Mm, it's not in mine. Of course it is. It's like herd mentality. See, we have to be in the herd to survive, but we have to keep ahead of the game if we want to eat. Watching helps us survive. Only, I wasn't listening. I'd seen something, someone, on the projection. Surely, watching does no harm, Mark. It's necessary. That's what technology does. You know, stuff like this camera obscura. It makes necessary things easier to do. Mm, like finding nice women, for example. She'd seen who I was spying on. It was the girl from the night before. She was in the crowd outside, but projected onto the table, and she seemed to be looking right at me. I thought, God, Mark, why are you smiling at her? She can't see you. I, I felt sneaky and special at once to be looking at her unawares. When she turned away, I, I didn't think twice. Mark! Oi! Mark, where are you going? Whoa. 
It was like he came from nowhere. One minute I was on my way to see a band with a cup of tea in my hand, the next he was there. The tea was everywhere and this guy was mopping me down and trying to brush bits of polystyrene cup off my top. It took me a moment to work out who he was. Seeing him in the light made all the difference. I sort of forgot how he'd been the previous night. There was just something about him. He had one of those open faces you feel you can trust. I was like, oh no, what a prat. Again, I, I couldn't believe it. But then she looked at me and smiled, and it was that kind of smile. I stayed inside the tent, watching them on the camera obscura. I recognised her then. She was in the year below me at school. She got all these prizes for art. Her name was Candy, like the sweet, like the drug. I saw them swap numbers. Something went funny inside me. I found myself reaching down to the table and touching her face with my hand. 